The railways of the 1920s were masters of transport. Today, they must compete with a vast air and road transport system. Suburban railways have to cope with the massive population move to the outer suburbs of Melbourne. The railways have had to modernise and expand. The famous red tape trains have vanished to be replaced by blue and silver passenger stock for the future. Yet the basic problem that faced the designers of the first railways still faces public transport today. To convince the travelling public that the railways are a better way to move people. the Melbourne Gravitation and Marshalling Yards. Here at Spencer Street is the hinge of Victoria's rail freight transportation system. Upon 150 or more different roads, more than 380 shunters work, day and night, dealing with a vast volume of goods of all kinds that daily pour into the yards from all parts of the state. The produce of the farms, the factories, the mines and the forests all flow along the railway network. Trucks are sorted out and dropped into the right roads for loading and unloading and for marshalling into trains and it's the shunter's job to sort out the trucks, move them up and down the yards and place them where they are wanted. In all this lies the shunter's skill. If he does it efficiently, work will go on smoothly without damage to goods or mishap to shunters. But if it's done badly or carelessly, the shunter's personal safety is threatened and the trucks and their goods may be damaged. Injuries, delays and claims on the railways result. And claims amount to more than £80,000 a year. All this is damage and waste. Meanwhile, the shunter's work must go on. Most times, he's a careful, conscientious and gallant worker. But always there's the human element that brings damage to goods and trucks, as well as to life and limb. All this damage costs money. Money which must be met by the taxpayers, of which you are one. Damage that can often be avoided by more careful shunting. And careful shunting can only come from careful observance of all those points that a shunter learns in his training rules that he should carry out every day of his working life. When these rules are not kept, things like this happen. Butters get entangled. And trucks get damaged by impact. Butters broken off completely. Trucks bent and twisted. Each damaged truck, of course, has to be mended. Repair work is done at the North Melbourne Loco Shops, one of the Victorian Railway's hospitals for injured rolling stock. These trucks will now have to be repaired and spend several weeks at the North Melbourne Shops. And they'll cost both time and money. Instead of being in commission, they're virtually out of work. And each truck out of commission means the daily loss of its earning capacity. That is, £2.10 to £3 a day. Today, trucks are in short supply and will continue to be in short supply for some time. Not only is there a world shortage of steel, but in Australia there's also a shortage of skilled tradesmen to make trucks. Therefore, any damage done to trucks means less clearance of goods from the sheds. Less clearance from the sheds means more money from the taxpayer to make up the loss. 
And, of course, the taxpayer includes you, a railwayman. This truck is now repaired, but its damage could have been avoided by the shunter doing what he'd been taught. Every shunter has six days of initial training and 56 more days to learn the work of the various sections. From the day he starts, he's part of a team. During his training, he will learn the correct order of the roads, as this trainee is doing here, as well as all the rules of shunting, such as going between trucks, always facing the direction of the movement, and grasping the chain to get a firm grip. A shunter should never go between the buffers like this. First, he should always face the way of the movement. Second, he should grip the safety chain and bend himself well underneath the buffers. If the vehicles move, then the chain assures a safety of balance. The same thing applies to getting out. And never put your foot on a wet sleeper. This is quite the wrong way to do it. You must face the direction of movement or you'll find yourself thrown back completely off balance and with dangerous results. Instead, signal properly, enter properly, and make sure you observe the rules we've been talking about. <coughs> in coupling trucks, first connect hoses in this way. Then make sure to turn on the air taps, otherwise the automatic brakes won't work. When you uncouple, you reverse the process and turn off the taps first. Then uncouple the hose. Next, pick up the link, keeping the hands back as far as possible. This only applies, of course, to link couplings. Automatic couplings work differently. After uncoupling transmission chains, never leave the link like this. Otherwise, this happens. Here the link was left between the jaws. Another truck collided with it and it jammed the couplings. The only way these trucks can be separated is by a welder burning them apart. Automatic coupling looks easy, but you must make sure that the pigtail is not detached. This one is detached and is therefore dangerous. Should you pull the lever now, you will lose balance because the lever meets no resistance. Therefore, you must test the uncoupling lever first. And make sure the hose is uncoupled or this will happen. The hose will be weakened and that can hold up a train. Shunters must also know their braking systems. And there are several of them. The ratchet brake. The wheel brake. The overhead wheel brake. The overhead ratchet. The white mark on the truck shows which side the brake is. And here you see the two together. To apply the drop ratchet brake, the good shunter uses his arm nearest the truck. If he reaches across his body, he will be thrown off his balance and he may end up underneath the moving truck. But by using his near arm with his knuckles facing towards the ground, he safeguards himself against nasty knocks. Face your knuckles up and this is what will happen. Never press down like this without first testing the brakes. Sometimes brakes are defective and have a little resistance. Careless application of them could then throw the shunter off his balance. Do it like this. The wheel brake has a different principle. The ratchet lever is grasped and the wheel turned in the direction required. The markings show which way. If the brake is applied, then you turn the wheel towards the on sign. If releasing the brake, then you turn it towards the off. But be careful of the wheel spinning back. Different again is the overhead wheel. Grip the handle to mount the platform and then pulling on the brake is simple. You merely turn it quickly until it is applied. The only thing to watch is not to turn it too slowly. A Q-type truck needs special mention here. Wind the wheel towards the center to brake and to unbrake, wind it towards yourself. At the same time, Keep your other hand on the edge of the truck for support. 
Like the overhead wheel brake, the overhead ratchet is quite simple to work. To apply the brake, pull the lever towards you just like this. To release it, simply move the lever away from your body with a short, jerky motion. By using various braking systems properly, the shunter can prevent a great deal of damage to goods and trucks and, of course, to life and limb. He has many kinds of jobs to do and he's had good training to do them properly. But he must always be alert to use his own judgment according to the equipment he's dealing with. For instance, he has to watch for a worn ratchet brake, like this, which results in trucks being sent down too fast. He's got no chance at all of slowing them down once the trucks gather speed. At the same time, he has to be careful not to send them down too slowly. By applying the brake too early or too much, the truck may go down the yards at this pace. He has to realize that against headwinds or on cold days when oil thickens and the rails are cold, he must adjust the pace of his trucks on a far different basis than on a hot day with a following wind. This becomes part of a shunter's experience and judgment, a judgment which can send trucks racing down or have them pulling up too short. And when they're short, time is wasted while a tractor is brought to haul the truck onto its right place. Again, he must know his trucks. This one is treated differently from this one. Or this, which needs great care. This will run at a different pace from this one. The type of goods must always be taken into account in setting the pace of each truck because the type of freight dictates the weight of the truck and, in turn, weight controls pace. For other reasons, trucks must be watched carefully. For instance, timber or girders that stick out can cause damage if the trucks carrying them are sent down following certain other types. The timber or girders can even derail louver trucks and damage others as well as their contents. Heavily laden trucks moving too fast do thousands of pounds of damage each year, and no taxpayer escapes his share in paying the bill. Expensive delays also happen while vehicles that have been left foul of points are derailed by trucks coming in from other roads. And while this damage is being put right, roads are blocked to traffic and the whole carefully scheduled system is thrown out of gear. This is not an uncommon scene. It's a daily one that could easily have been avoided if the shunter had stuck to the elementary rules of his training. His failure to do it has caused a lot of work for others upset the complicated organization of the shunting yards, cause damage to the trucks and their contents, and lost revenue to the railways. Which, of course, means more taxes and higher commodity costs for the shunter, as well as everybody else, not to mention, of course, the repairs that have to be done to the trucks themselves after much effort has been spent putting them back on the track and hauling them off to the North Melbourne shops. And then, of course, the track itself has to be repaired. And this takes a lot of men and a lot of time. Trucks travelling at breakneck speed like this are a positive menace to everything and everybody. They can force up the clips on the doors of other trucks and they can also spill coal onto the tracks as a future danger to shunters. If the truck travels at its proper speed, these things don't happen. It all depends on you, the shunter. A great cause of trouble is the careless manipulation of points. This is responsible for half the derailments and their inevitable damage and delay. There are several types of points lever. These are ball points and bolted ball points. This is the spur lever. And this the WS point. To work ball points correctly, the shunter must face oncoming trucks and then release the tongue. In working the spur lever, he must face the oncoming truck and not the way the truck is going. 
but don't sit on the lever or put your knee like this there isn't enough pressure either way this is the proper way of working the spur lever the pressure should always be from the top the WS points present no problem and working them is simple the only thing to guard against is being thrown off balance when an engine passes over them and while we're still on points here's a point watch your feet never let them get caught with the order of the roads goes the order of the loads and that's the brain center of the yards from his card the shunter knows where every drop should go because each one has a corresponding number these trucks are being placed in a road from which they will later be sent to a suburban station it's most important that trucks be placed in their proper roads miss drops delay consignment and could result in damage to trucks and goods the shunter must very carefully watch the order of diversion there's a siding for each truck appropriate to its particular type of merchandise and its destination when it reaches its destination the goods are unloaded and the trucks are sent back into service in arranging the order of diversion shunters have to be careful to match following trucks here's a South Australian truck going down the yards and here it's properly linked to a GZ truck although South Australian trucks have ordinary couplings they are without buffers and if they're sent after this IB truck they could not be linked because the IB has an altogether different coupling device the trucks have to be parted and the order has to be rearranged at the end of his training a shunter will know all these things but his motto must still be vigilance he must be vigilant whether he operates points or jumps off and on an engine whether he couples or uncouples trucks leaving the link correctly placed applying the ratchet brake correctly and turning the wheel brake the right way using the utmost care in mounting the engine and making sure ropes are tight and not loose like this to trap a shunter and of course seeing that points are operated properly avoiding this sort of thing and this and this and this and this and being responsible for the long delays that follow responsible for waste and for the danger caused by our avoidable carelessness for wheat rotting in a railway yard to fatten pigeons for damage to rolling stock and expensive delays a shunter must not walk in front of buffers or get between trucks the wrong way he must apply the drop ratchet brakes properly and avoid scenes such as this and this and this it is in your hands the hands of you the shunter to prevent this and remember damage from carelessness amounting to eighty thousand pounds a year in claims on the railways eighty thousand which you pay your share along with every other taxpayer beside this there's an economic loss and higher commodity costs to be met by you and every other wage earner. So, 